Okay, we've learned how to pull the data in. Next step is to typically select or reduce the data down to a smaller, more relevant set uh, that we need. Now, we don't always know what that relevant set is right away, uh, but let's go ahead and learn the tools for that right now. This is sort of an iterative process. Uh, let's say we've summarized the data and we found that some of the data points don't meet the criteria we want. For example, in this data set in Bike Buyers, we have both a text and a numeric version of each of these fields that I made previously. Uh, so let's get rid of, we don't want to, we don't want to have the same field twice. So depending on which field we want to actually use, well, that's going to, the, the decision will depend on the uh, algorithm that we choose later on in the phase, in the process. But for now, let's just choose uh, one version of each of these, like the numeric version. So what I want to do, we're going to get rid of, uh, let's stop working in parallel. I'm going to get rid of the bike buyer CSV because in this class, I want people to learn to get in the habit of always pulling from a live data source. However, if my database gets slow or you're watching this on YouTube and you uh, uh, aren't part of the class, you're welcome just to use a CSV file. The results are going to be the same all the way through. But for now, I'm going to get rid of these, select them both, delete. Uh, here's a little trick. Hit the zero, uh, the number zero key, and it will zoom in, uh, make your pills fit the size of whatever screen you have. Oh, that's a little dialed in. Let's back out. I'm going to get rid of summarized data, although I don't have to. I could leave it over here out of the way. Actually, you know, for learning's sake, I'm going to keep it here for just a moment so you can see uh, something. What I want to do next is use the select columns in data set pill. So you can search for that right here or see if I can even remember where it is. I always just search for it. Uh, probably in actually, no, probably input and output. No, no, I have no clue. Let's find where it is. Select columns and data set data transformation manipulation all right so here's pull out here and notice that it has one input one output like summarized data so the input is going to be the full complete data set so i left summarized data here just because i wanted you to see that you can have an output go to as many inputs as you want uh, or as many other pills that have that require that as an input i don't have to replicate input import data over here to pull it into summarized data so um, I get this uh, little red value required. This means that I can't run the experiment. If I try to hit run, it says, uh, nope, sorry, and it'll select and highlight the pill that has a problem. So some pills have parameters that are required. In order for, so these are settings that I need to choose in order for that pill to run. In this case, it says I can't select columns in a data set if you don't tell me which columns you want to select. So if I don't have it selected, I just see over here on my properties pane the properties of the overall experiment. But if I click a pill, it gives me the properties just of that individual pill. Notice that the import data pill has properties for uh, where I want to go to get the data. Summarized data has no parameters. That's okay. Some don't. Select column says launch column selector to, to choose which pills you want. All right, so there's lots of, uh, this is a pretty good tool. There's several ways I can do this. It says by name or with rules. By name is grayed out and doesn't give me the option. Why? Well, that's because I've lost the green check on my import data and it doesn't know what columns are an option. So when I click on launch column selector, it says, okay, we can't choose by name because I don't know what columns you have, but we can use rules. For example, begin with no columns and include, let's include based on column names. When I click this, it does go back and it can say, okay, what are all the different possible columns that we remember from, from the previous cached run? And it says, here's everything you can choose, and I can select them like this. For example, let's get marital status numeric, gender numeric. I can pick all of them that I want and hit this checkbox, and then it knows which ones I want. However, let's go ahead and stop right here and run the whole project. I'm going to run everything. Let's make sure that our cache data is still selected down here so that it remembers. Scroll down. Yep, okay, great. Let's run everything. I'll pause this. Okay, that's finished running. So now the import data has a green check. Let me show you what's different in my select columns from data set pill. Uh, let me launch the column selector again. And I still have this chance to include columns by name one at a time by clicking in here. But I also have now this by name option, which gives me this view of available columns and selected columns. It remembers previously that I selected those two. So now I can come over here and let's grab anything that's numeric. So income, children, my education numeric version, commute distance numeric cars, age, homeowner, purchase bike. I think that's it. 
The rest of these fields are text-based versions of the same ones, or it's fields like region where there, there isn't a numeric version. This the value the possible values here was I think Europe, North America, and Pacific. I can't there's no number that I can use to represent those in one field. Because if I if I number North America as one and Pacific as two, that implies that Pacific is greater than North America. Well, greater than in what way? That it doesn't mean anything. So some fields I can't convert to numeric versions, which is why region doesn't have a numeric version. So let's say though that I want to analyze these fields in some way, likely to understand causes of what what determines whether or not someone will purchase a bike. So when I'm doing a data mining project, even though I'm in the preparation phase, data prep phase, I still have a good idea, just like in the data understanding phase, of which field I'm I'm trying to explain at some point. So let's check this box. I kept my green check up here. I still have my green check over here on summarize data, but I lost my green check on select columns. So what I can do now is hit run selected as long as I have that pill selected. See the difference when it's selected or not. I can hit run selected and it will just process this one, keep my cache results on those others, and save me a tiny bit of time. The nice thing about Azure though is even if I were to run the whole project, it actually keeps a cached version of each pill, uh, and where possible it will use those even if I run the entire project again. So even hitting this run doesn't take a whole lot more time, with some exceptions. Anyway. All right, so let's, uh, this is finished running. Let's right click and see what this output gives us. So I right click, go to results data set and visualize. And it says, cool, you had an original data set and it's reduced down now to just those fields that you selected. So this is a very common tool we use to take a larger data set down to something um, uh, that's more relevant. Why, you might ask, why don't just go here in the SQL statement and select only those columns we want. Well, because we're still in the data preparation phase, we're still exploring and learning. And it may be that I don't know for sure which fields I'm going to want for my very end product. I want to try a lot of them. However, it's a lot easier to pull them in once up front and then use select columns to reduce them down rather than keep going back and changing this and pulling from the database again every time. That uses extra resources and we don't want to waste them. So the select columns is a great way to, uh, uh, actually we need to change our title. We're not importing data. We are going to select and reduce the data set. That's what we're doing here. So this is the first of four pills I want to show you on reducing our data set down. Let's, um, at this point, let's get rid of summarized data. Uh, we know we can still have that. And now let's learn a couple of others or a few others. So I'm going to move this. Actually, no, I'll just keep it here. Uh, the next pill I want to show you is a useful one um, when sometimes we have just a massive number of records from our import data. And uh, for example, let's say that I have um, not just a thousand uh, customers, but about a million. All right, when it comes to predictive modeling, you don't need a million records to come up with a good prediction. What you need is maybe a thousand or two thousand randomly selected records that represent the entire population. So, uh, there's there's you hear the concept of big data in data mining big data means we have lots of data to work with and there's some types of analyses that do want to use all of the data for example back when we were in the data understanding phase and running creating visualizations we want all the data at that point however when it comes to predictive modeling we don't need millions of records we just need a smaller set of randomly selected records that represent everyone and we can process those in a prediction much much faster and more efficiently and to the same degree of accuracy or at least a very 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 close degree of accuracy to where it's not worth uh, processing all of the data so what we want is the ability to then take this massive data set and reduce it down further not by eliminating columns like this one does but by eliminating rows so how do we do that well there's a couple ways first let me show you the split data pill so split data is useful for a variety of contexts. It has one input and two outputs now. Let's pull in our select columns and click on the properties here of split data. And there's multiple ways we can split that are all super useful. Let's start with the first one, split rows. What does this do? It says, okay, fraction of rows in the first output data set. 
So this is going to split it in half or by some dimension that we choose. 0.5 means split it in half and put half out this way and half out this way. Randomized split, we almost always keep that selected here because we want the two data sets to both represent the overall data set. We do that by randomly selecting the records. If we just selected the second half of records, that could introduce some bias. For example, what if the customers in the last half of the record set are different from the customers in the first half? For example, maybe our data set represents um, the last uh, week's worth of sales. Uh, the people who come in on Friday and Saturday and Sunday could be a different type of customer than those who come in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And so if we just split the data set in half, we could be creating two different types of populations. And then if we try to run predictions off both of those, they could end up becoming different and we could make some bad decisions. So we always or almost always use a randomized split. Randomized seed, a random seed, what does that mean? Well, put in one, two, three, four, five. What this means is that when we do randomly split the data, where should we begin? Now, computers don't get the true concept of random. They need some way to say, all right, yeah, we can randomly select, but we need a starting point. Which record do we start with before we then choose a random number next? Uh, it, it's not random in the true sense um, that you and I think of. So what often happens is in a programming language to choose a random starting point, they'll use whatever the millisecond is at the moment the, the randomization begins. Um, and they'll use that millisecond as a random seed. If I leave it at zero, that's what it'll do. And whenever this runs, it'll just take that millisecond and it'll be as close to truly random as we can get. However, if you want to follow along with my results, we need to use the same random seed. And then even though the records are randomly selected, that means that you'll get the same random selection that I get if we both use the same seed. So let's stick with one, two, three, four, five, just so your results look like mine. Stratified split. What does that mean? Well, let's say that when we create our two subgroups, we uh, want to make sure we're, we're very interested in the difference between, let's say, uh, men and women as customers of our bike products. We want to make sure that we're, uh, when we divide up our groups, we have the same proportion of men and women in each of them. Well, stratified sampling lets us say, let's select a column that we can use to uh, ensure that when we do randomly select across both groups, that we maintain the same proportion of men and women in both groups. So I would come here and I would launch column selector and I would say select gender as the column that I want to do my stratification on. So what that would do, let's say that right now in my current data set, I have 60% women and 40% men. If I select gender there, that would simply make sure that, that when it does do a random selection, that it doesn't randomly make one of the groups 65% women and the other one 60% women. It'll maintain the proportion in the existing data set uh, in the two sub data sets. I'm not going to worry about that for this example, so I'm just going to click false. We've explained it. That's good enough. And let's run this thing. Okay, that's done. So what we can do, as a reminder, if I right click in the middle of the pill, it gives me both of my outputs. So before we just saw results data set, now we get results data set one and two, and I can go to visualize on either of them. Or if you want to, you can right click directly on the one you want to view and go to visualize. So here it says, all right, same fields, but now I have 500 rows instead of 1,000 randomly selected. Let's say uh, um, I, I could use this for a variety of reasons. We're going to use this a lot more when we get to modeling. Um, we split data and we use one side for testing and one side for training. Um, for now, uh, just know that split data gives you the entire original data set, but in two proportions that you can specify. And whatever number I put here, it'll put that fraction out the left side and the remaining out the right side. So let's look at some other split rows uh, or split uh, data options. Uh, recommender split, I'm going to save this one for when we get to the recommender algorithm. Uh, I don't want to, it would create too much confusion right now. Instead, let's go to a regular expression split. This is also extremely useful. Sometimes we'll want to create different models for different subgroups of the population. So for example, let's say I do want to actually have a different predictive model for men versus women. So what I can do here is say, let's use what's called a reg regular expression. Now, if you've had experience pro with programming before, we often call this regex commands. So it's a way to use uh, a string 
In this case, we're going to first specify a column name, and we called it gender in our data set. And then we're going to say where gender equals, oh, you know what I uh, realized? We actually have, we use the one called gender numeric in our data set right there. So it's not gender. Change this one to gender numeric. And to say where e equals zero, I simply put in the, the text zero. Okay, let's get that running. Should only take a second, there's not a lot of records. There we go. Okay, so let's right click the, now on the left side because it's going to return anything that this expression returns true for. It's going to put out the left side and anything that's false on the right side. So let's visualize. Uh, here we go. Every rec, we have 509 rows where gender numeric is zero. And when we go out the other side, that means we'll have 491 rows where gender is one. So there's lots of ways to use regular expressions. In this video, I'm not going to have time to go into all of them. However, I pulled up the Microsoft documentation for splitting data using regular expressions. Uh, if you just search for split data using regular exp or split data Azure ML Studio, you'll see all of these options. Um, and I can come down here, and there's lots of examples. So you remember that, uh, I don't even know what to call it, character, race the power of. You can use that to say where it includes, it starts with anything between A and F. Uh, or there's a substring uh, here. It tells you right here, the first result contain, a data set contains all rows where the index column begins with one of these characters, like that. So um, lots of examples here for using regular expressions. There's also relative expressions, which I won't go into, where if I'm using with numeric, using numeric data, I could come back here, all right, I changed my mind, and I could say relative expression. I could say column name, for example, age, is greater than, well, let's say, 38. So relative expressions just means I'm working with numeric data. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, uh, gender numeric was numeric data. I can treat numeric data as text data and use a regular expression, but not vice versa. Oh, whoops, what did I forget here? Let's see what I messed up. Greater than 38. Let's go to my relative expressions right here. Greater than that. Oh, you know what? Did I forget? Let me pull up my error. Um, age, what's it called? It's not called age. It is called, oh, it's because it's case sensitive. I forgot. Capital A. There we go. Unselected. That should just take a second, too. Oh, no. Uh, oh, it's because age is a system type string. Okay, actually, that's good. We'll come back to this. Right now, it, because when I pulled it from my data set, it thinks that age is a uh, string, so it's not supported by um, relative expressions. What I need to do first is cast or convert age into a numeric field. So let's save this until later on uh, for now. All right, so back to split data. Uh, I think that covers it for now. It's turning data into two subsets based on a random split of rows. I can stratify that split uh, and maintain a certain proportion of a, of a certain uh, feature, or I can use relative or regular expressions. All right, let's go back to um, uh, split rows. We'll keep it 50-50. Let's say that um, I want to do something else. Um, let's use a new pill called partition and sample. This is one that handles the problem I was talking about briefly before, where let's say I have a million records, and instead of dividing that million records in half, or let's say I could pull it off of select columns, or I could pull it off of split data. In fact, let's do that. I can do it either way. So let's say I've split my data. Um, actually, let's go back to our examples of female. I like that, where gender numeric is zero and let's say uh, I still have now it's only going to give me 509 rows but let's say for whatever crazy reason I need something less than that um, I can use partition and sample and let's say I, I, I want to keep all females which is why I'm on this split data side right here but I only want 10% of my record set so 10% of 509 should be 51 records so right here I have uh, the type I'm going to use is called sampling. 
head says give me the first however many rows I specify out of this result set. So if I want to keep the top whatever, I would use head. Um, sampling says give me a random 10%. Whoops, 10. And once again, because it's doing a random sample, if you want the same records, let's always use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 if you want your set to match mine. I can use a stratified sampling once again. And this time, the difference between what we did before in split data and what we're doing now is that it eliminates the other 90%. Where split data would have pulled 10% to this side and 90 to that side, partition sample just gives me uh, the remaining rate. So let's go ahead and run that. While that's running, you probably noticed there were some other, uh, well, no, let's just show this one thing at a time. All right. Right click, O for output data set, visualize. So now, yeah, because I had 509 female records, now I'm down to 51 randomly selected female records. I use this one a lot when the data I've pulled in, I've got like something ridiculously high, like I, I never, I, I rarely want to work with more than 10,000 records for a predictive model. Um, it's just not necessary most of the time. And so I use this one commonly to get me down to something below 10,000, often even one or 2,000, uh, depending on the data set. So uh, that's partition and sample. I want to show you one last pill. However, it's not going to really apply to this data set a whole lot. Um, so let's do this. I'm going to keep all of this here and move it over. And I want to grab a Microsoft data set. I want you to scroll down here to movie ratings. Is that the one I want? Yeah, movie ratings. Okay. So movie ratings, right click on it. Oh, by the way, to get to this, remember, you got to go to saved data sets. And then we want to go to the Microsoft samples data sets, if you didn't catch that. So right click on movie ratings and take a look at it. Visualize here. This is, uh, we're going to use this later in the course when we learn about recommender algorithms or recommender engines. This is a list of people, user ID. This is a foreign key. You've learned what those are to some user table. And then movie ID is also a foreign key to some movie table, some movie titles. So here I've got a list of people rating movies and here's the rating they give it and the numeric timestamp uh, of when they gave the rating. If I want to um, uh, come up with some recommendation algorithm later on in this course on, on, uh, on movies, I, I run into this problem where what if people rate the same movie twice? You can watch a movie twice. What if they rate it twice? I often want to remove duplicate rows. That's what I'm getting at. So anytime I've got the same user watching the same movie and rating it twice, I want to get rid of that. So here I've got 227,472 original records. Let's eliminate duplicate rows by using the remove duplicate rows pill right here. Let's pull this in, connect one to the other. Remove duplicate rows has some values required. Uh, launch column selector, it says, okay, what fields do you want to use to remove duplicate rows uh, to, to make your, your basis off of? Well, think through this carefully. If I select user ID, then what it's going to do is remove, and I'll get this running, it'll remove uh, all records that have the same user ID listed more than once. And it'll keep, well, which one is it going to keep? Well, that's where this box comes into play. Retain first duplicate record. If I deselect this, it'll retain the last duplicate record. So I started out with, remember, 227,000 records. Now I'm down to 26,000. So about a tenth of my original data set. But is that really what I want? Now I have each user rating one movie. I don't want that. If someone watches two different movies, I want their rating for those two different movies. I, I, I want to capture all that. I just want to eliminate ratings for the same movie for the same user. So what I need to do is come back here and remove duplicate rows. And I can say add movie ID to this. So now find all situations where both the user ID and the movie ID are duplicated. So let's check that box and hit run. Uh, run selected. So we should go from 227,000 to something larger or smaller. Before we reduced it down to about 26,000. By adding more criteria, it should increase the size of this data set. So here we go. My addition, my 
original was unique. So I didn't have any duplicates in there because at 227,472. Visualize 227,472. Yeah. So I guess in here, uh, each user and each movie ID is just listed once. All right. So these are my four different techniques for once I've selected the data to reduce it down to something smaller. Pick the columns I want, keep all the rows, split the rows up based on some criteria, but keep all of them, just send them out two different sides. This one says reduce it down to something smaller, but eliminate, don't keep the ones we don't want, just keep the proportion that we want. And then remove duplicate rows as a way of getting rid of duplicates. That's it for how we select and reduce the data set down.